Hello and welcome to another episode of Autogefühl. Today with me, AJ and Jonas. On today's show, we're going to be taking a closer look at and driving the Mercedes Vision AVTR. This futuristic concept is inspired by the Avatar movie. It's got interesting technology, a lot of sustainability, and just look at it, it's out of the world. So, hmm, gives me an idea. Jonas, you thinking what I'm thinking? The exterior design of the AVTR is definitely very intricate. And to help me analyze this a little bit better, I have here Joanna from Mercedes with me. So Joanna, the front definitely looks very similar to the existing Mercedes EQ design language. So is that true or is this something that you, know, you envision uh, as a company that you're moving towards this kind of a design for your electric cars? Um, what are the unique things about the front uh, that connects this car to a Mercedes? So for sure, the whole car um, follows our EQ design language and you can see a lot of parts what you also see um, on the past cars. In the, and um, for example, um, the exterior color like with the silver and the rose gold accents really follow our IQ strategy and you will see that on a lot of cars from our side from the IQ. So if we walk towards the side, now one major talking point about this uh, concept are the wheels. Now I know that the wheels are, you know, they can rotate, the rear axle also steers, the car can crab. Um, so what are the, you know, what is this trying to envision? What are the concepts behind these flowing colors and the lights uh, into the inside of the wheel? Maybe you can tell me a little bit about that. Yes, so they are really inspired by the movie from the Wood Sprites, who come out from the Tree of Soul in the movie. Um, so this was the inspiration, and I guess you can see it really well. And also the colors, um, my colleague Mark will explain you more about it, what for functions they can have. Mm -hmm. And I also see that, of course, it being a concept, there's no requirement to meet any safety regulations and so on. But I do like this really expansive, large window slash door coming together. So is this also something that uh, Mercedes is, you know, in terms of bringing the exterior inside or the fact that it's an, it's an electric car, uh, you don't, you're not restricted by a lot of the conventional design uh, philosophies because you don't have an engine in the front and so on. So maybe a little bit about the side profile and what makes this unique and how perhaps we can see something of this ethos going forward with Mercedes. Yes. So the really wide opening also um, shows you the strong inside out structure, what you can see here. For example, the line who is running through the opening also runs through the interior, it becomes the headrest then. So it's a really connection and also with the big glass, we wanted to show that it is one sculpture and that it connects each other. All right, the main thing that I notice right away here at the back are these moving flaps. It's almost bionic, very organic. So is this designed to be like that? Is it supposed to seem like a living thing? Yes, it's really a design to be like, so if you come to the car, the car registers to you and then it starts to breathe. Um, so it's an emotional um, living organism, the whole structure and the whole car. 
So it's like, it's like a puppy, you know, greeting you when you come home from work. It's really excited to see you. So it's really excited when you come into the garage to start driving. Um, another interesting element that I see down here are these like large buttresses um, with these really beautiful flowing lines with these lights. Now, is this also to, again, kind of evoke, you know, that sensation of speed while it's standing still? Uh, what is the, the, the design ethos behind uh, this area? So it also follows the merge uh, scene so that it really comes from the interior to the exterior, the neurons, um, we call it like this, and also to see the connection between the interior and the exterior again. So Great. Well, I don't know if I'm ever going to see something like this on the road in my lifetime, but uh, certainly from the exterior design, I think it's a cracker. Now let's divert our attention to the interior. So of course the design language also continues. I see the flowing lines, but I'm also interested in the sustainable materials. So let's start with the design first. Can you tell me a little bit about these lines? Yes. So first what you see is this big opening and this form follows also to the interior and gives this iconic loop. This is inspired by the um, dragon riding from the movie where the Navi is connecting to each other. Um, then this line goes progressively to the headrest from the front. So the line is um, enclosing the front passenger, goes through the front, uh, front um, seat and gives the headrest. And the front seat is in sensual concave and convex shape in a mono volume mm -hmm. um, and then you can see this really nice and big um, surface what is also inspired by the tree of soul so it's coming from the rear going to the front through the dashboard and is dramatically dramatically going out to the a pillar and there we used like several pieces in different tinted colors so from transparent to opaque mm -hmm. that you have the seamless connection and then we come to the um, roof structure and mm -hmm. there um, we used 100% um, recycled material made of PET bottles mm -hmm. and um, on the front seat and all what is covered um, in white is Dynamica. We also use that in our serial production, so it's right. also um, a material made of 100% recycled polyester. So they use old closers, flags, and also the um, cutting rests of the production. Mm -hmm. So they have a whole entire um, ecological product cycle. On, on the floor, we used a natural material. It's called Karun. Mm -hmm. and this material um, is, is growing in the rainforest and it also needs the rainforest to grow. So it needs the symbiosis with the other trees. Um, so you need the rainforest for it. So the company is also trying to um, let the rainforest grow again even more. And it's picked up by local farmers, mm -hmm. so a really good way. And we have it here in a light beige. Mm -hmm. I also know that you work a lot with the colors and the materials, um, sorry, the materials you've already talked about, but the colors as well. Yes. So maybe you can tell me a little bit about the choice of colors that you have and why, if there's some significance to that. Yeah. For sure, it also follows our EQ um, designed language with the rose gold accents and also with the blue. And the blue is text, bluish textile, for example, has a nice chauché from a darker blue to a lighter blue. Um, you can see it when the light is coming through the car. Mm -hmm. And it's inspired also from the surface of the ocean when it's moving. And as I said, like all of the colors are following our EQ strategy and fit to that very well, yes. Mm -hmm. Great. So I know that the um, Dynamica is already existing in serial production, but what about this wood that you mentioned? Is this something you see uh, scaling up where you can have economies of scale where it would be you know, viable to start putting this in cars, in, in the Mercedes cars, uh, you know, five years down the road, 10 years down the road. Is there some kind of idea or, or is it just a proof of concept at the moment? So at the moment it's a proof of concept, um, but for sure we are trying to, to push also the series production in this direction, yes. Great, Joanna, thank you so much for your time. Well, I'm sitting inside now and it feels like I'm in some kind of a spaceship pod, uh, but to walk through the uh, new user interface, I have Mark over there uh, to guide me through this. So Mark, I'm sitting inside, what do I do first? First of all, you have to connect to the car. You make a deep connection with it. And we're talking here about a human-machine merge. So you merge with the car and the environment that you are really connected to everything around you. And if you want to wake the car up and get connected to it, you just lay down your hand on the controller in the middle and you feel 
that the controller is coming up and it's pulsating and it's even it's your own heartbeat it's, it's synchronized with your body and you you can really feel you are a part of the car now so and it, really it's, are connected it's, it's, it's uh, tracking my heartbeat my pulse and then it's i can feel the vibration in the seat and yeah it really does feel very connected yeah mm -hmm. and if you want to start driving the car you just push the controller to the front and the car starts in an automatic driving mode so you don't have to steer by yourself it's all done by the car and you can enjoy the virtual worlds inside the car and what you see here is a kind of advanced navigation map we call it an exploration map because there are so much details going on here you normally couldn't see with your own eyes so the sensors of the car can show you things you're not able to recognize like those magnetic lines in the sky or some nature forces in the tree and, and so it's a kind of extension of your own body. Great, so I can imagine that, okay, in the future, of course, it wouldn't be magnetic lines or nature forces. It could probably be um, wind, weather patterns, traffic, so on and so forth, which can be projected on, the, on this display. This could be all informations that really make sense when you are driving in manual mode, but also maybe give, just give you information about the environment. And this is also part of the story we want to tell. Be aware of the information and the car can really tell you and show things you, you don't even be aware of. And so this is, this is also a an, an, an very important thing of this whole story. So next, uh, how do I access my menus? How do I turn on navigation or media? Yeah, that's a good point because we have no obviously touch screens or knobs or anything like that. And you, you probably, it would be inconvenient to reach out for a touch screen. So we came up with a really innovative interface here and it's pretty easy and straightforward. You just raise your left hand and magically there appears a kind of menu on your hand so so the user interface is merged with your own body so the interface comes to you you don't have to reach out for it and you can easily slide through the menus the, we get a, me, a main menu and a sub menu and if you close your hand so, and there this is a way you can ex access content and and change the scenes on the dashboard so feel free to just choose any content you want and now we jump into a POI and the car is showing you in a very immersive way what's going around you. And, and you can, can see, hear and feel nature in a an, in an very different way you normally could in a normal conventional car. Great, so how do I go back to the main menu? If you want to go back, you just uh, turn your hand around and switch it again and then you are back into the main menu and again can switch the content. Very interesting. So I guess, of course, this kind of technology for navigating through menus would only be applicable in an autonomous vehicle, because right now, if you were going to drive a car, um, it's not practical to use this kind of projection and hand gestures. But uh, I think it's a great idea. Well, guys, I am joined by Boris. He's going to be my trainer here today because you're going to show me how to drive yes, that's the, right. the Mercedes Vision Avatar. The sky is beautiful. The sun is just setting. So perfect time to take out this wonderful car. So first impressions, these big wheels, what kind of fun stuff can they do? I can feel the car rotating around me. So that's because of the four axle, sorry, the, the yes, we got, four wheel uh, steering. We got two axle steerable, one in the front, one in the back, and mm -hmm. that um, makes us mm -hmm. do the grab walk, so mm -hmm. we can rotate our merge mm -hmm. device and drive parallel, mm -hmm. just for uh, switching lanes, mm -hmm. or if you want to go around um, small corners, we mm -hmm. can just push it to the side, mm -hmm. and yeah, we got some Mm -hmm. Pretty nice handling car. Wow, interesting. So everything is controlled with this one interface. 
Yes, correct. I just need mm -hmm. to place my hands mm -hmm. on all mercy wise. There's no steering wheel, mm -hmm. no gas or brake pedals. Just by pushing forward, mm -hmm. we accelerate. And I can show you some stuff we can do in this corner. Mm -hmm. So I can mix both kinds of steering mm -hmm. by going kind of a drift mode. Oh, wow. OK, so it's, you're, it's pretty intuitive. You're channeling your inner Kenny block. Correct. All right. OK. Now, how do you control the speed? Because I see that it's speeding up a little bit. Is it kind of autonomously deciding the speed or no, are it's, you? It's, it's just me by pushing it forwards or break, bring it back to neutral for okay. rolling or if you mm -hmm. we want to stop, we just ah, hit the brakes. OK, fantastic. I know this is just a concept, but do you have some numbers? What kind of power, uh, battery, kilowatts, zero to 60, any of those things? Or is it just a, it's a concept, so there's um, no, no such uh, specific details actually, right now? Um, I can tell you the correct numbers. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see what our technical <laughs> sheets will, will tell, but... Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, I can totally see that this four wheel and crab and, you know, the, the rotational effect of all the wheel steering is really useful for city driving as well, to be able to park in really narrow spaces. So I wonder why every car doesn't crab. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> I wish my car crabbed. It's just nice for switching lanes or mm -hmm. just um, enter a, a parking lot. Yeah. I also like that the glass extends almost up to your up to your uh, line of sight. So you do get a very expansive overview. Yes, this large glass door. It just um, feels like a living room. It does feel like a living room. I'm also completely reclined. My feet are stretched out forward. So it's it feels very just comfortable. Just relax and also safe. And mm -hmm. you can have a nice look outside. Mm -hmm. and just enjoying um, the view of the nature. Mm -hmm. So this is a completely new user interface for me. Never driven anything like this before. Ooh, and it's alive. It's very intuitive though. I just have to gently move forward and then it's, you know, just move this, uh, this, what do you call this, just joystick forward. And then if I leave it, it stays in that position. If I tilt it back, then it slows down. If I just rotate the top cap, this plastic piece, then it crabs. Well, I could totally get used to this. I mean, I do miss as a, you know, if I were to review this car, I do miss having a steering wheel and the uh, and, and, and brake pedals and a manual transmission. But if this is the future, sign me up. So this is a lot of fun. It can go pretty fast, but I'm not going to push it here today. So let's just turn it around. There we go. Rear axle steering makes it very easy really tight turning circle so pretty cool maybe in a hundred years autogear fuel will have a review of the production version of this car so stay tuned subscribe because you don't want to miss that now do you I had a great experience here today with the Mercedes Vision AVTR. I can definitely see in the future with autonomous vehicles the uh, user interface. But let me know what you guys think. Put it down in the comments below.